Well, hello there, Minecrafters. Thanks for coming by, and welcome back to our series, Comment to Command. That's where you've left a question in the comments to any of my videos, and I do my best to answer how we can do it in Minecraft. So for this episode, I've chosen a comment by Danny Wolfson, and he asks, how do you make a falling bridge or gate? And then in another comment, he continues, like one lever, one block by block. And I started thinking about that, and I wasn't entirely sure if maybe Danny, you meant a piston door or a sand, falling sand door or uh, or some redstone door. I'm not the greatest at redstone, but I started brainstorming and I came up with this idea, which is maybe a little more complicated than what you were asking for, but I thought it'd be pretty cool for uh, adventure maps. So let me show you it in action first, and then uh, we'll, we'll give you the tutorial of how I made it. So we go up to this lever here, we hit it, and the lever's up, and then a door starts moving slowly up, and you get this nice, cool stone grinding sound effect. We also cannot get in here until it goes right above our head, and now we can walk through there. We've got a hitbox there, and then he, I can't jump until it moves up there. And then it will stop, just like this. You hear a bang. There we go. We've stopped that door. The other cool thing is we can also lower it. So if that lever's down, we can lower this door slowly, but we can also stop it from lowering by hitting the lever up again. It kind of stops, moves up again. So I thought this was a kind of a cool idea that you might be able to use for like your adventure map. Um, it, it, it does use quite a bit of command blocks and it is a little more advanced, but uh, I wanted to show you guys this because I thought it was pretty cool. But anyway, uh, that's how it kind of looks. Now let's get into showing you how the command blocks work for this. So the way that this door is able to work is through the use of falling sand. And you probably would have guessed that if you're into command blocks. So I've got this uh, summon falling sand command here. And commands are in the description, guys, uh, if you want to copy and paste them. But uh, its capitalization is very important. We're going to summon it um, basically one block from the center of the actual command block. And we can make that block or actually the entity look like whatever block we want. It's not actually sand. It's just that you're used to seeing that in survival or gravel. But we're going to make it look like stone. And we're going to put a no gravity true tag on it, which means it's just going to float in place. It's not going to fall. And then thanks to uh, Amlup, a legendary map maker of the Uncharted Territory CTM map series, he told me that if I put this huge number on the time, Basically, that falling sand entity will never despawn, or it'll take years. I'm not sure how long it is, but uh, normally it would despawn in 30 seconds. So if I do that, we've got, uh, basically, it looks like a stone block, but you can walk right through it. It's an entity. It's not actually a block. There's nothing there. You can't even kill it or anything like that. And because I have no gravity on true, it's not going to fall or anything like that. Now, the other way it works over there, we'll show you in a minute, is it uses this teleport command. And I'm just going to show you that I'm going to teleport this very slightly up. And this is the problem with just using falling sand. It's pretty jittery. So the other thing I did was I took falling sand and I wrote it on top of an armor stand. So I've got summon armor stand, no gravity true on the armor stand, and then passengers we're using the same sort of thing. It doesn't despawn. And you can see here, we've got uh, the block on the head like that. And now if you watch the uh, watch the armor stand, it rises very, very smoothly and, and uh, very nicely like that. So the only other thing about what I've changed over there, well, I'll show you in a minute, is if you add the, uh, on the, on the armor stand, if you add the marker tag, so if I do marker uh, true, what it's going to do is it's actually going to summon the block at the feet. And in this case, it's it's really important that that, that happens. Uh, for some reason, it's a little buggy. I think if the armor stand is touching the ground, it'll go down on the bottom. But anyway, if you change it to a marker, then they are at the same height when you play around with them. You can see it kind of jumps up there. But anyway, let's take a look at the actual uh, mechanics behind this thing. All right, so all the command blocks are conveniently hidden behind this. I bet you never would have guessed, but I've got them labeled with a couple of custom uh, player skulls here. Up is for when the door goes up, obviously, and then this group of command blocks here is to make the door go down. Up top, we have basically where it gets activated. We've got a little delay. If you remember how the door kind of stops, makes that noise, and then starts back up again, that's what this delay is for. And then uh, we have this is this hopper clock is where the sound gets activated, and we will uh, we'll go over that in a bit. 
Over here, I have a very basic redstone <laughs> command block contraption here that allows that lever to be powered, whether it's up or down. That's really important in this case. But uh, we'll go over that, I think, probably at the end of the video. But let's start over here with this rectangle of chain command blocks. They line up perfectly with this rectangle of stone blocks because they're all being summoned at the same um, coordinate here that uh, kind of works out. See, this is the bottom corner, bottom corner. I've been doing this quite a bit if I have a lot of command blocks that I want to either set block a bunch of stuff in the same location over. I just make the, I just make the uh, shape of these and then um, relative coordinates to where they want to go. So in this case, we're doing summon. I'm going to uh, summon our armor stand with no gravity true. So it's going to float in place. I've got invisible on so that we're going to be able to trick the player into thinking, whoa, we got moving stone blocks. Small true doesn't necessarily matter so much. It's just easier for me to work with. Marker true so that the stone um, actually gets set properly on that armor stand. And then we're going to tag that armor stand with a special word so that when we input it into our system that makes the door move, we can actually move that specific armor stand. All of them have the same tag here with gate stand. And then on top of that, we've got the falling stone or the falling sand that's a stone block riding it and in the passenger here. All these commands are in the description as always. And then we're going to tag that falling um, sand block as falling gate block so that we can reset the time. It'll never despawn. And then uh, no gravity true is on. Drop item false is on. I'm not sure if it's totally necessary, but if you put it as uh, or actually it's on false if you put it on false that means that when you drop a falling sand block on like a torch you know how it pops out that item that sand uh, item we're not going to allow it to do that so that in case the door messes up it's not going to reveal our tricks to the uh, player so much hopefully and then time is on that huge value so that uh, those uh, falling sand blocks won't despawn the only difference is the bottom layer here has an extra tag so if I go over to that, I, I was talking about tags, we're gonna tag that um, armor stand. All these bottom ones, we're also gonna tag with bottom gate stand, and that's just because the bottom ones actually indicate uh, to the system whether or not the player's gonna be able to walk through that path if the door is closed or open. So that's basically how that section uh, lines up with the door there. So let's say that the current state of the door is closed. So it's all the way down, the player comes up to the lever, they flick it on, and the first thing that they do is they activate a set block command over here. Now remember, this is the up, uh, up movement for the door and this is the down movement for the door. So if they flick it up, they're gonna issue a redstone block right here. I'm just gonna break this so uh, we can see what's going on. And the first thing that has to happen with this door before we get any movement at all is we actually have to stop all the sounds being played because we don't want grinding stone being played in a command block when there's no movement for that door. So first thing we do when they flick the lever is we stop all the sounds that are being played. And the way we do that is we fill the area where the hopper clock is with glass so that these command blocks that are playing the minecart riding sound effect at a low frequency, you might have heard that. We're also actually executing it at the bottom gate stand. We tag the bottom ones, the bottom ar armor stands with bottom gate stand. We're playing the sound effect right there, this grinding stone sound. But if it's going through a glass block or a transparent block, then, uh, then they can't activate those command blocks. So that's how we stop the sounds being played. But there could be a bit of a residual sound from the command block left over. And the way we get rid of that is we issue this stop sound command so that now we have no sound we then activate this enderman um chat or ender chest sound effect along with a iron golem being hurt at a low frequency and that's where you get you just hear it faintly that banging sound to make it kind of sound like the gears automatically just got stuck and reversed that's what that does so that activates first and then we have these uh repeaters here it gives that short delay just in case the door's in current movement and you can see here, if I activate it, we, we do that uh, thing there. We got a delay and it activates these two command blocks. So first of all, it shuts off the other one in case both of these are being run at the same time. I'll show you. Shuts off the other one and changes it to clay. And then it activates the one that we actually want. Because if they're going to flick the lever, it's going to be in one state. And then if they flick it the other way, it needs to shut off the other side. So while it's running, you can see it's raising up there and then eventually it'll shut off. There we go, shuts off just like that. Let's start it going like this. 
will start to raise down. As it's going up, it's going down now, but as it's going up, what it's doing is it's changing the time of the falling gate block. That is the falling sand that looks like a stone. We tagged it with falling gate block. It's changing it to be always that negative value that it never despawns. And then uh, we have to make it rise up at 0.1 of a degree on the y-axis. All those armor stands that are tagged with gate stand, the whole door moves up very slowly, 20 times a second. And it's actually going down. Let's make it go up again. So there we go. It's now activating these. This whole section here is being activated if I put this redstone block there. And then after that, we add the quartz blocks over to that, those sounds. So they're making that sound at those, and you can see it just turned off there, making those sound at the bottom armor stands. Okay. So the next thing it does, this is where we make sure, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to resummon the door right here. That's where we make sure that the player cannot walk through here. So you can now see the hitbox, and there are barriers being summoned wherever that armor stand is. So anywhere there's an armor stand, there's a barrier being summoned, or uh, set blocked, <laughs> not summoned. Uh, right, yeah, right here. So at the gate stand, any one of those ones that's the door, we're going to fill. I'm using fill because uh, we can replace with fill. So I'm going to replace the actual block coordinate where that gate stand armor stand is with a barrier block so that the player can't walk through there. And then at the bottom gate stand armor stands, the bottom row, wherever that one is, when it's moving up, we're going to replace half of a block uh, below it with air. We're going to re uh, we're going to replace the barrier blocks with air. So basically, that means if I do this right, there we go. It's moving up. You can see the hitbox changes to air as soon as you as soon as it raises up a half a block, change the air. It's gone, and then they can walk through it. And that kind of simulates that. Uh, they can't move through the door unless there's actually a space to move through there. And then uh, what's next here? Uh, this one here. Okay, so then what we're going to do is we're going to, at any of the armor stands, we're going to test for one block above to be bedrock. So you can see at the top there, top bedrock. That's going to signify if that happens, we have this conditional command block. We're going to turn off this system. So let me just move it down. You'll see. As soon as those hit bedrock, uh, get rid of that. As soon as they hit bedrock, it'll turn off that system. There we go. And then the last thing it does is it sets a block over here, and that just uh, makes that sound effect here, stops the sound, and does the same thing we did over there. So that's basically how the up works. The down is, is almost exactly the same. If we start to go down, we're going to uh, do the time thing again. We're going to move it at a negative value again. We're going to add that sound on again, as we did before. We're going to fill the area area as the gate comes down with barrier blocks. So basically, as soon as the uh, falling sand gets in a block space, it'll change it to a barrier block. Then the player can't actually pass through it. So you'll see over here, you'll see that as soon as it gets, there we go, it automatically uh, changes to a barrier block. And then, uh, what else do we do? Then we test for wool, orange wool at the bottom. Down here, you'll see I have some orange wool. Uh, if, as soon as it, as soon as it, the bottom um, armor stand sends that, it shuts off. Same we did over there. It just shuts it off with this conditional command block. Uh, I had to add a little bit of a teleportation of going up 0.2 of a block just because for some reason, it would actually remove the blocks below, but just visually, there's a bug anyway. Uh, I had to add that little thing. When it stops, because it's conditional, when it stops, it just juts the door up slightly. And then we uh, shut off the sound right over there, just like this. And we shut it off, and uh, everything's good to go. So that is, you know, <laughs> I went a little fast, I think, but uh, the commands are in the description. You kind of guess what's going on there. But that is basically the mechanics behind the door moving up and down and stopping and starting how we want it to uh, do that. So the last thing, as I said, was this, this little lever section here. I'm just going to break these blocks to show you. Um, very simple little redstone thing. If it's up, it turns on those. If it's down, it turns on that redstone block. And all that does is it sets the block, uh, well actually, 
the first thing it does is it shuts off the opposite one over there. We do that first. We also do it up there, but uh, we do it first over here. And then the second thing we do is we add that redstone block. But that's kind of a dual powered redstone system. If you see, we've always got it going one way or the other. So yeah, that was a, a little bit complicated of a tutorial, but commands are in the description. I hope that made sense for you guys. I think it might be kind of cool. And Danny, if that's not what you wanted, sorry, but I had fun making that and I have no time to go into uh, into the falling bridge idea. I, idea, yeah, into the falling bridge idea. The last thing uh, I just wanted to say, and you noticed this, was this whole, uh, this whole shading effect. It's kind of annoying. But I, I believe it's a bug. I did some testing. There is a link in the description for a bug report I filed. Just uh, if you want to vote for that, those should not be shaded like that. Hopefully they'll fix that one day. Uh, it does not affect blocks. It's just on falling sand. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching the video. Again, if you have any questions about anything in Minecraft and we can figure it out, let's do it. As simple as it is or as complicated as it is, feel free to write it in the comments. And uh, thank you guys again for watching. Enjoy your Minecrafting and have a great day.